uh, JP, what you been up to? God, well, uh, I moved to Atlanta from New York. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm approaching my year anniversary of being in Atlanta. Um, wow, it seems like just the other day. So you moved during the pandemic, right? I did. I moved. Yeah, it's crazy. March. I mean, I had. <laughs> I had plane tickets booked and all that, and we ended up packing up my car and, and driving down. Um, <laughs> You're like, never mind. Yeah, big 13-hour road trip, and um, I love it here. I mean, I've I've been fortunate enough with our weather down here that I've been able to like go out with some of our photographers and do socially distant drinks and things like that. But yeah, um, yeah, it'll be nice when things continue like to open up in the next six, seven months, and and really be able to experience things. <clears throat> Yeah, the weather, man, it's getting it's getting pretty pretty awesome down here right now. I'm so we excited. We did do some cool things though before before we were in lockdown. Like I got to go to the Atlanta Orchestra and go to the High Museum uh -huh. for their jazz nights. Um, cool. You know, because I, I before I moved down here, I had started coming down here in like September, October, feeling it out, seeing what I what I thought. Yeah. And, um, so I got to do some cool things down here before before March. Well, before we uh, before we start, I'll tell you this quick story about an ATL photo night that never came to be because of the pandemic. We were, I think it was going to be in March. We had, we had this thing going on with the high where the high was, they had this whole event planned where they were bringing one of their exhibits was basically like a live exhibit where I don't remember how many, but a, a, a group of Magnum photographers was coming basically to do this, like, residency at the high where they would just be shooting there every day for like a number of weeks and we were going to do a conversation with the photographers about the whole project the whole thing got canceled because of the pandemic but um it was like it was so cool um it was such an awesome idea and i hope they they will redo it and i wish i, I could remember what it was called but um it was pretty badass and like to have that to have like you know six magnum photographers together doing this sort of residency um i don't know maybe it'll happen again someday but that would be very that cool. that was going to be like our our march of 2020 um atl photo night but it you know never never happened well i got to go to one before i moved down here i was visiting and i got to go to the kt parker one which that's was very right cool. We love Kate. We love Kate. I'm gonna. Uh, we can. I think let's go ahead and actually start. Like, people always walk in the door late. You know, they always come in late. Um, but let me just, guys. I'm gonna. Uh, can everyone see? Can you see the the, the screen I'm sharing, JP? Yeah. Uh, okay. No, you can't. Can you? No. I lost. I lost you guys. I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me try this again. Here we go. Let me try this again. This one. All right. Yeah. Is it working? I can see it. Okay, can you see that? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, so make sure I got everybody in. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm doing, so if you haven't noticed, uh, guys, Kevin is not here. My, my, um, cohort co-founder Kevin Lyles is um, not here. It actually, it says I'm Kevin Lyles in the participants list, but I'm not, promise you. Uh, Kevin is um, down in Florida, this little thing called spring training, if you're into baseball. Uh, Kevin, Kevin Lyles is the Atlanta Braves photographer. He's got one of um, a handful of jobs that exist like in that world being like a, a like the photographer for a team um so he's got a really badass job and uh right now it's spring training so he's expected to be there so he's actually like working right now and um and cannot be here so on his behalf i want to say welcome to atl photo night to everybody who's here if anything is is weird on your end guys i know you're all muted but um you can use the chat tool to sort of say something or just like unmute yourself and scream um and uh we'll try to figure it out but <clears throat> welcome to atl photo night it's uh february 2021 this is our second one of 2021 and so so happy to be back doing this we essentially had a, a year forced off from 
from our from what we do from what ATL Photo Night is and um, you know we're trying to adjust back to this new reality and so doing these virtually is what we're going to keep doing for now and um, so we had a first one last month and uh, now we're here with um, Jennifer Perlmutter and I'll, I'll tell you I'll, I'm not going to say her name ever again I'm only going to call her <laughs> JP because that's what she goes by it makes me feel weird just saying your name because I only know you as JP. But um, but JP is going to be joining us before um, we get into her, uh, all of her amazing work and career. I just want to say that, um, you know, like you guys know how to follow us, Instagram, Facebook and Twitter and all that is how to how to get a hold of us, um, because that's how we announce all of the uh, the next events, the coming events down the road. We're trying to. Um, just build out our calendar for the year. So we're gonna have lots of really cool stuff happening. Um, and so Kevin and I, real quickly, we started ATL Photo Night in, 20, in 2016. And it was like, Kevin and I were like we, should, like, we should do this thing where we kind of get together and talk about photography. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. You know, we should, we should do that. And, um, and now it's turned into this which is very different from where we started, but I think like so awesome. And the community that's sort of grown around um, the event is just really incredible. And I know that you all value it just as much as we do because you tell us all the time. And it really means a lot that um, you support uh, um, ATL Photo Night. It looks like I'm like, I'm just, there's, a, there's like a fly around me. So I'm, I'm shooing it. Um, but anyways, you know what ATL Photo Night is, and um, JP, my, my good friend, JP, she's a colleague, she's a friend, and now an Atlanta resident. How are you doing, JP? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, this is going to be good because, you know, um, ATL Photo Night is not just for photographers. I mean, it's kind of like, obviously, that's who we are, and that's our our focus, but a lot of the people that come are um, designers, uh, picture editors, um, creative directors, you know, digitechs, writers, and then other people who are just inspired by visual art. So we've been wanting to have somebody from the, the, the photo rep agency side of things for a while. I mean, it's been on our list for like so long and for some reason, we just haven't done it yet. So I'm actually really excited that you're the you're the first one to um, to sort of come from that angle. Um, and I just want to, you know, I'm not going to give too much of a preface of of who you are and what you do. Um, I'll let you do that. But I just want to say that um, JP has been doing this, uh, you know, as long as I have, if not longer, as far as being in the industry and what I really appreciate about what you do is um, you're really connected to the artists, to the photographers. And um, not to say that it isn't an equal partnership between a photographer and someone like yourself, but you really support and believe in photographers um, and really fight for them. And I really appreciate that coming from, from your position and the role that you play in making pictures. Um, it's just so important to, for someone like me to have people like you um, on their side and sort of believing in their work and, and just sort of um, and fighting for them. So I, I really appreciate that. But, um, but JP, tell us, what does it mean to be, I mean, your, 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 your title is kind of all encompassing um, and that's because you do a lot of other things, but a lot of things I should say, but Generally, would you would you classify what you do as the traditional idea of a photo rep? Is that what you would? Is that the easiest way to say it? That's how I got my start. You know, I, I started my career as a photo agent. Um, at first, you know, I represented one car photographer, and I was kind of a hybrid rep slash studio manager. Um, and I was living in LA at the time, and it wasn't until I moved to New York and I started. Um, reaching out to agencies like Greenhouse and, you know, at the time, uh, uh, Anderson Hopkins and Apostrophe and Cake Factory and all these places. And I was like, this is who I am. This is what I do. I, I would love to work with you. Um, kind of giving a sense to everyone of, of who I was and what I was capable of. And I ended up landing with Greenhouse where I was with 
uh, for the majority of my repping career, actually, I was with Greenhouse. Um, I also did a small stint at Anderson Hopkins. Um, and now as the director of photography and creative services at Found, um, we're more of a hybrid marketing platform and representation agency. So we're, you know, we are embedded in the idea of marketing photographers and getting their work out there to a, a wider audience. And then also for our artists who are not exclusively represented, we do offer those uh, estimating and negotiating services and more of those kind of like bespoke rep things that, that you need. Um, but for, for me personally, you know, I just think into, to what you just said a few minutes ago, so many photographers kind of live in this, their own vacuum of, of you know, what they're creating. So I do, I really love partnering with our, with our artists and you know, identifying those holes in their, in their portfolios or identifying their, um, identifying their key clients, you know, people who should, they should be going after and, and really kind of taking them out of that, you know, silo that they're in by themselves. So they can kind of see a broader vision of, of what they can achieve with their, as with photography as a career, you know, not just as a yeah. hobby or. Yeah. Yeah. So um, real quick, I want to, I want to just plug the picture you're seeing Jared Soares. Um, who you work with and is a really awesome guy, a really awesome photographer. Um, we'll talk about, we could talk about um, him in a second, but uh, to piggyback off of that, um, found in this sort of new, I don't know how to describe it, like you're calling it like more of like a market agency. That's been the trend for a while now where traditional photo agencies have just been sort of disappearing, going away, maybe becoming less important, um, you know, depending on your perspective. And then this sort of new, you know, as everything's changed over the past 10 years, the internet of everything happening, um, you know, iPhones and Instagram, everything has been changing. And I feel like places like Found and other ones are, have sort of ridden that wave and definitely filled a need because they offer, um, you know, a, a type of representation to, a lot of a lot a wider range of photographers than you know like if we were talking about this the other day you know there's a there's a, a handful of you know respected really good agencies left and each of them represent at most it's 10 photographers maybe 15 right so that's like you know that's a really small number of spots for the population of photographers 100 percent. i mean like i don't think I think there are some incredible agencies out there and agents and the idea of artist management will never go away. Um, it's just that there, there are so many artists out there. And, and at that point, I, I kind of wanted the ability to help more people at that point in my career. Um, I don't, I don't think they'll ever go away. I think they're important. And I think that they uh, serve their purpose when you get to a certain point in your career, you know, when, when you're busy and, and you're looking for that more of that guidance, you know, you get to a certain point where you're, you're shooting and you're creating and, and you need that management. You need that uh, someone to kind of have that broader picture for you, but we do that at found too. You know, we work with our artists and stay involved with their careers um, and stay involved with their marketing. So, so it is kind of like having an agent, but not in that exclusive, you know, uh, that exclusive format. You're not contracted to us. Um, you know, we can perform those, those uh, services and duties if and when you need them. Um, yeah. but it just leveled the playing fields. You know, we are an invite only platform. So we still have a caliber of artists that we want to bring on, uh, to make sure that they have, you know, solid production acumen and, uh, mm. are continuously creating, you know, obviously our industry got overrun by influencers. And, you know, I spent some time on the phone today with a client of mine, uh, who's a producer at an agency in New York. And, you know, they're doing some jobs with like people in the tech space who are tech influencers and, she says, it's just, it's just a shit show, you know? Um, you know, there's a need for, for real image makers and people who understand production. You know, photographers are workers of light, you know? So it's, you need to know how to use all of those things. It's one of the reasons why as you're, you know, showing the pictures that you, that I, that I chose, you know, it's, it's one of the reasons I look for certain characteristics and photographs these days when I'm looking at someone's portfolio. Yeah, I've always really appreciated the idea of um, photography as a craft, as something that is learned from other people and from just doing it hands-on and something that um, you can maybe, I mean, the goal is to master it over your, over your lifetime, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and you become just such an expert at this craft and maybe you're really good at certain parts of it, but there's no replacement for 
that just the years of, of honing your craft. Um, and, you know, like, I think with any, any, uh, any field that has been affected by the, the digitization of like what we do, there's a little bit of push and pull, you know, there's um, the people who are, who study it, who eat, sleep and breathe it. Um, and then there's the quick sort of quick, uh, easy way to do it. And there's a push and pull and you, you see that with, you know, the automization of, maybe you compare it to like, um, you know, jobs being replaced in, I don't know, some kind of manufacturing field where like the automating of, of things is sort of taking over. But um, like you said, there's no, like you can get close maybe with, um, you know, like there's some great stuff on Instagram, like, but um, you know, you can never replace someone like, I don't know, like Sebastian Salgado or like, um, you know, these amazing masters who've dedicated their life to it, you know? Yeah, you can't so, but, people who know how to use film cameras and medium true, format, yeah. mm -hmm. not to not to down on digital. Digital's great and it's, it's really helped our industry a lot. It saves clients a lot of money and mm -hmm. time, you know, and, and there's a mastery to digital as well. You know, there's something really special about being able to visualize something and capture it in camera. And sure, color correction and, and touching things up is, is part of the game these days. But being able to visualize that and really use your composition and use your lighting and be able to make yeah. something look and feel different because that's what happened with Instagram. Everything, all these presets, everything became, you know, so ubiquitous. Everything was looking the same. And, you know, it gets to a point where our industry ebbs and flows. And that was cool when it first came out. But now it's like, ooh, no, we want our brand to stand out. And how are we going to do that? We need to find an image maker yeah. who can help us elevate where we're at right now. You know, and and yeah. let the influencers kind of keep this micro market, keep the areas where they can influence for sure. But when it's going to come to these big campaigns or branding or things that are really meant to set your brand apart or your client apart, you need true image makers. Well, let's take a step back um, because I don't want to assume that everyone knows, you know, what a photo rep is. Um, photo that? agencies have been around for a long time. Um, I mentioned Magnum earlier. Magnum is a, uh, I mean, probably the most well-known photo agency, but even Magnum as an agency is not really like what agencies are anymore in a way. Um, Magnum is more of like a, like a cooperative, like a collective sort of run and owned by the photographers. But I guess traditional photo reps how we think of them, like someone who, like, like a photographer, like um, <laughs> Jurgen Teller, or uh, um, let's see, what's another? Who's another big photographer that you would just associate with, you know, being at a big agency? Uh, I mean, one of the guys in my in our slide right now, like Eric Alness. I mean, he's he's a huge photographer, you know. Um, Andy Glass, people I've represented, Randall Ford is another one, you know, and and because I don't want to go too big because there are people like, you know, some of those people like you think of and you're like, you know, the cast birds of the world and, uh, you know, um, oh, blanking on his name right now, but like Sebastian Kim, like there's, there's all these huge, huge photographers who are kind of getting all those high end like Gucci and yeah. clients, but there's this whole other, you know, world yeah. of photographers uh, that get really great work, you know, you don't need to be this huge person to be represented. Well, so, so tell, tell me this, what does a, what does a photo rep do and why do so many young photographers think that, um, that's what, like, that's the goal to get a, to get a rep? Often, and we, we've kind of hit on this before, but a lot of times photographers think that that's the next step in their career. It's like, okay, I, I want to be a photographer and now I need an agent. And that's really putting the cart before the horse. You know, mm. it's being a photographer is developing and, and honing your vision, honing your style, finding your niche in the market. A lot of photographers, what kind of ends up being a problem for them is they start playing with all these different looks and feels and lights. And, you know, as a, as a rep, I need to look at your work and envision where I can place it within the market. So a rep isn't just someone who's going to come in and estimate and negotiate your projects. They really are here to manage your career. They're here to, you know, keep you on track, make sure you're marketing your work, marketing your work for you. Um, 
you know, identifying key areas for you to grow and, and build out your portfolio. Um, you know, when, when you're really an agent and you're in the trenches on, on projects and things like that, we're writing treatments, we're, you know, staying kind of in touch throughout the whole production. Um, we're really there to be an advocate and a voice for our artists throughout the entire process of, of you know, the job at hand um, and the jobs that we're going after. You know, so I think so many people want a rep because they think, oh, okay, this person's going to market me and it's a quick fix and I'm going to get all these things. But there's so much that comes before that. You know, um, mm. when photographers would email me, hey, you know, I'm interested in your agency. The first thing I'm going to look at, and this is going to take me way back in the beginning of my career, but I used to call it the four P's of photography. And the first one is like your portfolio. I want to see a consistent, you know, cohesive body of work. I want to see a vision. And even more so now, because like you were saying, there are so many artists yeah. out there that these images I picked, like these are things that stand out to me, but these are things that when someone like me who looks at hundreds of portfolios a week, there are certain people who just stand out. So that's the first thing I'm looking for is like, what does your portfolio look like? The second thing is production. You know, what is your production acumen? Like, do you already have a team of, you know, assistants and digital techs? Do you understand how to run a set? You know, what, is, what does that look like for you? Um, and really understanding that, you know, I can't just take someone who has a great eye and put them on a set, you know, with a client who's giving us $300,000 and cross <laughs> my fingers that it goes okay. Right. Um, so it sounds like a lot of times the misunderstanding is the new photographer thinks that finding an agent will help them to get those, thing, those things and the agent is looking for the photographer that already has that sort of foundation built who the agent can then work with to sort of take them to the next level or to just keep that thing going, right? Yeah, it's all about taking it to the next level. When I see someone who, you know, cause the next thing is like, uh, you know, your personality, I need to make sure I can get you in on a creative call. I need to, you know, be able to know that you can get on there and ask the right questions and are, are thinking holistically about a project. Yeah. Um, I'll get to the fourth one later, but yeah, I, I like to see someone that already has maybe a few campaigns under their belt, uh, mm -hmm. has a few clients already, has an established foundation, because you get to a point where it's like, okay, there, there's the tipping point. It's like, this person has worked for, say, Levi's and Nordstrom, or has done a bunch of, you know, if they're a food photographer, maybe they've done a few campaigns uh, for brands, like whether it be Hungry Root or Daily Harvest or whatever it might be. If I see, okay, they know the creative process. They've been working with clients. Their work is incredible. I now know that I can take their work to creatives that I know, you know, and, and share That's it with yeah. agencies and brands. And now I actually feel like me, you know, doing this on their behalf is going to generate interest, is going to generate that kind of work. Um, so there's just a lot more to it than just, you know, hey, you know, you have great work. There has to be something else yeah, there. Because yeah. reps these days, like we don't have the luxury of just, you know, bringing anyone on, you know, it's, it's time, it's money. It's a lot of work to yeah. grow a photographer and foster that relationship where a client wants to not just like their work, but commission them to create something. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, sadly, one of the, one of the, the really important things that we, uh, that photography students aren't taught in school is that, uh, you know, once you finish school and you become automatically a freelancer, essentially, so much of your time um, and building your career and just your day-to-day -day work is not taking pictures. Mm -hmm. To actually be a working successful photographer, there, there's so many other things you have to do to support that, you know, to keep it going, to give you the chance to shoot um, the things. And there's so much around that. And it's like not even hardly breached in, in school, in art schools. It's like, you know, like even if you're a fine art photographer, there's so much you have to do mm -hmm. um, just to to be a working photographer. And so, so let's let's take this uh, this picture or I guess diptych that we're looking at Arturo almost. Mm -hmm. What is it about him and this work that stood out to you? So he's another guy who's on Found, and this was done for AARP, and there was actually a really cool video that went with this as well. And for me. I loved the, you again, is I, I loved his perspective. I loved his, the brightness and the poppiness and the colorfulness of these, of these photos. I, I loved yeah. the way, and especially when you look at the whole story that was done uh, about this guy, I, I just thought it was such a beautiful 
and, and just kind of captivating, you know, story. And, and I, yeah. look for that. I look for that storytelling. I look for, for all of those kind of little things. Like this is a guy who's in his neighborhood and playing his, his instrument. <clears throat> and, you know, I, I really suggest y'all go to Arturo's site and, and look at the project because it's really great. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I think his work in general is really of the moment and he's able to capture things as they are, as they're happening in a really beautiful and elevated way. So it doesn't come off as just a snapshot. It comes off as more of a planned, uh, composition. Yeah. yeah and he, I love things guy. that are like in your face too. Like when he's pointing over here and like, you know, it, it's just that perspective. There's a lot of energy. There's a lot of kinetic energy in the, in these pictures. And he also managed to make really beautiful colors and tones and pictures and some pretty heavy, uh, midday light, which is, yeah. you know, not, <laughs> not easy to do. Those are really nice pictures. Um, yeah, it could be very hard with that like hard daylight to get something that feels like this. I feel like he just pops off that background, you know, and it's just. Yeah, totally. It's it's wonderful. And um, just as another example, Jay Kolsch, this picture is, you know, it, it couldn't be more different, you know, um, a moody black and white. It's a slow shutter. There's some like snow blowing. It's is this love for the, um, love the motion love yeah. the contact right. that like you're drawn into those eyes and there's not even like there's like there's a slight catch on the bottom of her eyes you know it's not even you know you look at portraits a lot of the times and one of the reasons i chose this is because with portraits a lot of people are looking for that really specific uh catch light in the eye you know to okay. really drag yeah. you in and with this portrait you just didn't even need it he used the tonality of the black and white you know to just make her pop even with all the motion even with like the, the slow shutter which could have made it a little too blurry it's just so sharp and so you're just yeah. there it's a great um it's a great take on the sort of richard avedon style lighting you know where it's just so soft and the lights kind of just everywhere you know i don't know how he shot this but um you know good i always say that like good no matter what you do good uh good photography whether it's commercial whatever it's just all about storytelling even if it's like just advertising for a brand it's it's still it's but still storytelling part. you know jay shoots a lot for um athleta and other like sports and fitness brands um i've always been a big fan of his work and uh, a lot you know again like it's just it's something that stands out to me you know and, and that's yeah. Well, so, so um, you know, not everyone can be an uh, arch driver and mm -hmm. Jurgen Teller or um, Annie Leibovitz or whoever whoever else is like the sort of making a million dollars on a, on a shoot. Um, and that's what I think is, is really cool about how the agency world has changed and with the, these new marketing style agencies like Found and some other ones, um, they, they offer the sort of a lot of the same things to photographers without having to be an arch driver, you know? Yeah. Um, you can you can be uh, a mom who uh, does like family shoots and, and photographs kids. Like obviously there's still a high bar. You still have to be an expert at what you do and be a hustler, but um, you know, like it offers, so just like the, it's just, instead of just being a few doors, you know, to get into that sort of elite area, there's like, a lot of other doors now, you know, that sort of popped up down the hall. And, um, and it could be exactly what you need, you know, mm -hmm. if, um, if you're not trying to, to be the next arch driver or something. Well, interestingly enough, you know, I, I happen to live in the commercial and editorial world, but I love to follow uh, on Instagram. I follow a lot of like children's photographers. So, mm. you know, people who are doing um, kind of like bespoke family photos and things like that. Um, and even wedding photographers, like there are some incredible wedding photographers out there and yeah. incredible like family photographers out there who still there, I look at their portfolios and I probably could pick and choose images that would give them a great commercial portfolio. You know, that's not what they specialize in. It's more of a consumer market. But yeah. a lot of these people make just as much, if not more than my commercial really? guys. Oh yeah. I mean, hmm. I have wedding photographers who, who make, you know, who are friends of mine who make a ton of money and love what they do. Granted, they give up a lot of their weekends, <laughs> but you know, they have very uh, specific styles. Um, Steph yeah. Grant is one of them who, who I'm very familiar with. Um, 
So there's not, it's like, there are just so many ways to make a career for yourself in this industry. And I follow a lot of those people. But what I will say is I still find that the people who do really well in those industries, the people who you see featured in the knot or the people, the people who you get the, the call outs on like HuffPost wedding or whatever it may be, <laughs> are people who have very specific or, or honed in visions and styles for their work. So someone can identify yeah. them. And that is what it's, I look for, like just those identifiers. Yeah, I feel like, you know, it's almost like you have to, especially when you're starting off or whatever point you are, you know, you have to experiment, experiment, experiment a lot, figure out what's your thing, like what really makes you get excited about photography and then mm -hmm. do that in whatever genre and whatever, just pick one, you mm -hmm. know, food, cars, whatever it is, because it's going to reflect, you know, that passion, that unique vision is going to reflect on it, whether weddings or kids or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. um, and that's what makes these people like the amazing wedding photographers so special is because they're not setting their bar at being the best, you know, wedding photographer to win the wedding photo contest, you know, they're going beyond that, they're trying to be the best, amazing master photographer, and they happen to be doing weddings, you know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And, and I really love this this picture here is like so beautiful the light is so incredibly beautiful i love chloe aftel's work um she's another one who i've known her work for a really long time um and yeah she just does some really beautiful lifestyle stuff she's done some work for levi's um she has a lot of different commercial clients parachute things like that but one yeah. of the reasons i picked a lot of these images and again you know photography is a lot about and our industry is a lot about trends this happened in 2008, it's happening again now. Whenever our country goes through hardships, advertising is something that really sets the tone for how people are gonna respond. Um, yeah. And you know, the, the way that I saw it in 2008 and even things I'm seeing now, it's, it's kind of goes in these two different directions and it'll explain why I kind of picked the photos I did. The first is really authentic lifestyle portrait driven imagery helping people feel connected to one another, especially at a time when we feel so disconnected. It's like, and it's kind of this weird push and pull right now because we feel super connected yeah. with social media, but we feel disconnected because we're not in person and it's this push pull. Um, and the other thing, as you move along, you'll, you'll see distraction. You know, other people like to use distraction. So it's how can we create campaigns that are fun, that make people, you know, laugh or think something's funny yeah. or things mm -hmm. like intriguing. And it kind of goes those two ways. And it depends on what the brand is. You know, if you, you want to do something fun and, and like when you get down to, to the end of this, you'll see a photo from one of my favorite ATL uh, photographers. You know, it was a really fun campaign um, and, and really appropriate for being stuck in, house, in your house and being stuck at home. Um, so yeah, but something like this with Chloe, like I just, I keep on thinking about how many people are at home, all the baby, like they are gonna have a total baby boom right now. Of, <laughs> it's so uh, true. Whole, <laughs> generation of COVID babies. So I just loved this image and how intimate and beautiful it was and well styled it was. Um, again, that soft lighting coming in was just really you know, nice, the textures, it was just really great. <laughs> <laughs> Another uh, completely you know, extreme jump to the other end of the spectrum. Exactly. Um, so I'm not familiar with Dominique's work. Is, is it all still lifes? Yeah, Dominic is an awesome food photographer. Uh, he has a lot of like, he has a very kind of big conceptual edge to him. Um, and I, I just think his work is so funny. And this is one of the things that, you know, I had gotten as an email promo one day and it just made me laugh. Yeah. You know, I, he's, everything he has sent out during the pandemic has been so thoughtfully curated. Um, so many of my photographers had to pivot very quickly to talk about yeah. what they could offer in studio for their clients. And, you know, at this point he had used this kind of as, outreach to talk about his COVID safe protocols, you know, what he could mm. in the studio. And again, it stood out, it made, it made me laugh. It was one of those things that, you know, when you get a lot of emails and you hit delete, delete, delete after seeing certain things, you, you kind of stop and you're like, yeah. all right, he got clever, that was fun. It wasn't even, you know, some of his photographs are, are super fun and funky. Like he has this heart one that says, it's your baby. And like, he has just like, he's, he's just a funny guy. He's a funny guy and he takes well, that to work, but he also does, you know, huge campaigns for Dunkin' Donuts, you know? That's a great anecdote for a photographer to hear that, you know, someone in your position, like you said, just gets inundated, every editor gets inundated with 
email promos and printed promos, maybe not so much anymore, but uh, saying a lot of the same things. So, hi, I'm whatever photographer, and here's what I do. And at some point, you're just you're not even you're not even stopping, right? And if so, so the goal on our end is to make the editor actually you know actually read it, not yeah. trash it immediately, like just to get there. And so this is a this is a, a great real life example of um, one of the 100 emails you got that day where you actually you didn't trash it, you, you kept it. And I think, yeah, it's, it's the great idea. It's bright, you know, it's, it's so like on, uh, you know, the like news value of it with the mask is yep. just so perfect. So um, he always uses good. very vivid colors, very poppy backgrounds. It kind of has that pop art feeling. Um, a lot fun. Of work, yeah, a lot of his work is similar to that. He's done a lot of work for cannabis brands in that in that kind of vein. Um, and here's the thing, this is a style that's also, you will see all over Instagram, you know, but right. the difference is, is Dominic understands production. You know, Dominic can get, you know, 10 shots in a day if a client needs, you know, he has his yeah. team set up of stylists and people he can work with. So, so that's a big difference for me when I'm, when I'm looking to bring on a photographer that I want to represent. That's so cool. Um, let's talk about, um, this is Eric Almas, who you mentioned earlier. I'm sorry if it looks a little bit uh, I don't know if it's just uh, a, a bandwidth issue on my end, but um, maybe you can sort of give us um, some some real working examples of of how you have or would work with someone like Eric and promoting his work. You know, you describe what Found is and what some of these other places are as, as um, agencies, but more of like marketing agencies. And that's as we know, as as freelancers, it's all about you know, how do you get more work? You have to market yourself. You've got to send out promos. You got whatever it is. Instagram is marketing and social media is marketing. Um, so how how does someone like you uh, partner with the photographer, Eric, in this case, um, to 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 market his work to get more work? Mm -hmm. So one of the things when I look at a body of work, I try to identify different categories or areas that I think they'd be good for. Eric has such an incredible portfolio full of fantasy and and things that take you to these far off places so the first thing i think of is like okay i know he's great at compositing i know he's great at putting together elaborate sets or being uh in a place that he can kind of uh do these beautiful black back plates and kind of add things together and layer them yeah. so i i start to think of you know I, I usually like to think of what is already out there that i've seen like that you know um, so okay. for Eric, you know, I immediately, he, he screams travel tourism to me. I think about, and, and keep in mind, travel tourism isn't just like your tourism board and stuff like that. I look at things like the American Express campaigns or yeah. the, the Delta Sky Miles campaigns, um, you know, really big, like Hilton Honors had, it wasn't done with Eric. It was done with Troy House at one point. Like Hilton Honors had these really beautiful uh, travel campaigns. Brad and, uh, Brad and Summers had done it for Nespresso. So I start to think of all of these bigger brands, you know, that do these kind of uh, more fantastical kind of shoots. Um, I mean, really, you could apply his work to so many different things. But Eric is someone who immediately to me is a big agency kind of guy. You know, these are bigger ideas that would be executed by larger teams if they need. Granted, he's been able to do a lot of this, you know, with COVID, um, you know, he, really? you know, there are some things that Eric, I had I read on his site because he had a kind of his COVID protocols. Um, I have to see if I can, I can still find it, but he had uh, kind of like case studies and CGI and composites, things that he can do without having to be on these big sets as well, you know? Mm. So knowing someone's capabilities is incredibly important. Uh, speaking of which, oftentimes, and I haven't done this with Eric, but I have done it with a, a few other of our photographers, you know, creating these capabilities decks, coming up with, you know, oh, okay. you, yeah, introduce yourself, introduce your work, introduce your team, uh, if you have one, kind of how you work, um, and then being able to, you know, send that out to clients that you really want to work with. Um, I do a lot of that. Interesting. Kind of, guide my, my photographers to do a lot of that. So it's almost, um, you know, like if say I was bidding on a job, we'd put together like a pitch deck of, you know, what we, how we would do it. It's almost as if a photographer is looking for um, an agent, they might put together their own sort of pitch deck about their experience, about their work and not just show some really good pictures, but also, you know, writing out 
how they work, what else they can do, maybe besides like just take an amazing picture or how they get to that amazing picture. Um, that's a really cool insight. Yeah, I mean, I just did it. Uh, Soraya Zaman is another uh, photographer who I work with. And I just did a bunch of, you know, bespoke outreach for her, for them with their capabilities deck, sending it out to uh, Nordstrom's and, and Levi's and, and Gap and all of these different uh, brands for possible pride campaigns. And their pitch deck was incredible. They just included, you know, an intro to who they are, their team, how they work, their COVID protocols, a few pages of work examples uh, that they've done for other clients and sent that out and we got a really great response from that. I think that what people hmm. want to hear, it, it's not just the, hey, this is my work, I want to work with you. It's, this is yeah. why I want to work with you. This is what I have to offer. This is where I see our visual alignment, you know, really going after the brands that you want to work for. for. It's, it's a lot of work. And it, again, it doesn't have to just be commercial editorial. Even if you're a wedding photographer or a consumer photographer, how are you talking to the people that you want to work with? You know, what are you telling them about what's different? That's so true. You have to, um, you know, as, as you hear often, you don't, you can't just, I mean, most of us can't just sit back and let the work come in. You have to sort of go after the work you want, especially if you're trying to get somewhere, you know, with what you want to be shooting. If you're just taking whatever you can get chances, I mean, most likely it's not going to be amazing stuff and not going to be amazing stuff that you love. Mm -hmm. So to really target this, you know, in the direction that you want to be doing more of, if you really love, you know, sports, you know, yeah, you've got to, you've got to go after that, right? This is, yeah, Why you this, have um, to keep shooting like that fourth P for me is, is being prolific. You have to keep shooting. You have to keep mm. creating. If you're not working for a client, work for yourself. There are so many ways to be involved in this industry from photo assisting, photo editors, art buyers, you know, doing digital tech, getting yourself embedded you know, in it, if you're working for a photographer for a while, you know, I've, I've seen so many first assistants end up moving into their own big careers, you know, but they started on set, yeah, started definitely. learning all the different little things from, you know, putting down sandbags on, on grips and things like that and holding boom mics and doing all this stuff to be who they are now, you know, um, yeah. There are some people who have just fallen into it. You have the people like Olivia B who just had a beautiful <laughs> eye and then people just, you know, surrounded her by the right people, but that's not the case for everyone. You know, it's right, yeah. crap, you have to hone it. Yeah, uh, that doesn't happen. Uh, yeah, this is insane. It's just visceral and, and raw and real. And he's another one who has a lot of really cool conceptual kind of work. Um, right, it's more composite, conceptual. Um, I'm always fascinated by this type of photography because it's so, it's like the furthest thing from what I can ever do. Um, I'm just, I just want to ask this person so many questions. <laughs> and you, you got to look at his whole body of work too, because some of the stuff, you know, you can tell might be composited, but there are, there's some things that are straightforward in his portfolio as well. Mm. Um, you know, but I think where he really shines is when he does this really kind of cool stuff. So let's talk about while um, we move on from, we could just stare at this for the rest of the night, mm -hmm. but I do want to look at everyone's pictures. Um, I'd like to hear your take on uh, portfolio reviews. It's something that we talk about often and a lot of photographers that we have talk about it. And um, they, you know, there's a, there's a variety of um, people's feelings about them. Um, I think most of it's positive, but you know, portfolio re reviews have been happening and have also kind of morphed over the years. But um, essentially, they're you know, if you haven't ever been to one, um, they are usually happen over a weekend, maybe um, one, uh, several times a year. And anyone, you know, there's organizations that do them. Anyone can do them. But basically, whoever the organizer is invites. Um, reps like JP, but also editors on the editorial side, mm -hmm. creative directors, um, people, basically people who will hire you, people who in your future could, will, would hire, you know, are hiring photographers every day. And you pay to go there. Um, you pay for a spot essentially because there's a, a certain number of spots and you, and you pay to have time with the, the editors or agents that you choose that you want to sit down with. And it's kind of like, you know, you are, you're paying for that access. You're paying for that time. Um, and so a lot of people, you know, will be like, I, why should I have to pay 
you know, um, it's a lot of money. Uh, but um, I'd love to hear your take on it, JP. I mean, almost everyone that we've had who has done it has said, you know, it is a lot of money usually, but if you even get a half a job from it, it pays for that, you know, like it's easily a day rate at a really crappy magazine day rate, you know? So, um, and it's, I think it's a great experience for photographers. What would, what would you say? I love portfolio reviews, uh, specifically my favorites, uh, SPD, the Society of Publication Designers. I think it's an amazing review that they put together. Um, yeah. and have a lot of influential photo editors and, and creatives, uh, you know, who will come from the editorial world and the agency world. But um, I, I love their review. I think that the people who are involved and, and who come to review the portfolios are really anxious to see or excited to see uh, what's out there. And this is crucial when you're building your career because you want right. to network, you want to get out there. And, and I know it's tough right now with the virtual stuff, but mm. I do find them very important. Um, uh, the um oh what's the one that um it's pdn is no longer but it's resource magazine and they do um trying to think of what it is every year though in new york there's a, a big uh, trade show and there's um i think it's called oh, the photo plus expo thank you yes photo plus yeah. expo they do reviews there um i've always i've always done them those are actually the ones i did were for free but they did have um, other ones that you can sign up for. And I, I don't know why I'm blanking on what they're they're called, but those are really great. Um, and I always really liked uh, the ones that Boulevard Artists put on. Um, you know, uh, again, kind of photo works. Really like photo works yeah, too. Yeah. Set up really well. They always had really great people. I mean, even for me as an agent who would go and review portfolios, it was also an opportunity for me to meet some people face to face that I hadn't. Like, I think that was the first time I met like Amelia Halverson, who was like at Billboard at the time, um, yeah. you know, and Sarah Burroughs, who was at People Magazine. Um, so I've, I've, I really think that, um, you know, doing the getting out there and networking is is so important. Getting people to see your work, but also remembering like it's not just supposed to be this critique of your work because everyone's going to have different opinions. Some people sure. are going to love your work. Some people might not. And like, it's not supposed to just be like, okay, I like this. I don't like that. You know, you could, it's, it's nice to get feedback and know where you might be falling short for someone. If, if you mm -hmm. are able to be, you know, a, a real life, like, you know, someone they could use to hire. It's, it's good to know where you're falling short so you can fill in your portfolio. But yes. the goal really is to try to meet with people that you do think you have a visual alignment with. Like if you're a portrait photographer, an editorial photographer, and you're like, I really want to get in with the creative team at AARP or at People Magazine right. or at the Washington Post or, or whatever it might be, trying to find those people that you actually think are going to be worth it to meet with, not just people who are going to be like, you know. Yeah, so doing, so doing your research. Or illustrated. <laughs> Yeah, so doing your research and, and choosing wisely. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do think it is a good opportunity, honestly, though, to hear feedback about one's work because as a freelancer, we don't, after you finish school, there isn't a lot of that, you know, like Photo Night is great because we talk like deeply about um, pictures, but, you know, like as a freelancer, you will, you are going to meetings and showing your work, you know, at, at, at agencies or editors, but having that chance to hear feedback, even just once a year, maybe you do a portfolio review once a year, um, but you're, you're getting a lot of different people in the room at the same time and you're getting really good feedback. Sometimes those, those opportunities can be really um, transformative because you just kind of, maybe you just need like a wake up call or maybe it just something strikes home with you and you realize like, this is what I got to do. Or um, because, you know, when you're in the grind every day, um, working, hustling to get work and it's just, it's you. And if you have someone like JP, you know, you've got some, some support and giving you feedback, but a lot of times you're on your own, you shoot your job, you turn it in. And a lot of times you don't really <laughs> hear anything as far as feedback. It's like, thanks for getting it done on time. Um, but you're not, you're not dissecting your work. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, and I tend to be pretty honest with people. Like when I see their work, um, I tell them what I, what I think is great about it. I tell them what I think is missing, especially if, you know, I think you have to be really prepared to know who you're meeting with as much as you can. Cause I know those schedules can kind of fluctuate and change sometimes, but being prepared, you know, if, if you want to, if you're a portrait photographer and you really want to work with say billboard magazine, you know, 
asking them the right questions, being prepared to say, what are you looking yeah. for? You know, what do you normally mm-hmm. look to hire? You know, are there places I can fill out in my portfolio that would, you know, yeah. show you the type of work that you'd like to hire? Um, I mean, I love that you're on Gerard and Bellavander right now, because this is a, <laughs> a duo out of Detroit. And one of the best things that they've done throughout the entire pandemic was just can create, create, create. They This was yep. the series that they did. And this is just one example from this same series where they did sticker food, plastic food, and then real food. And they, it was, <laughs> it was brilliant. So they funny, kept, yeah. They kept on coming up with ideas that were promo worthy. Like it was just, you know, it for me, who's sitting here being like, it doesn't need to be a commission job for me to want to promote it. It needs to be something that stands out, that, that says something. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I love people who got really creative during this time and really took it upon themselves to just, you know, keep making noise, keep making noise and, and good noise. You know, this is just what they did so many different projects throughout the quarantine. Uh, and they're just food photographers and, 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 you know, product and still life photographers. And it was just, again, every time they sent something to me, I was like, you guys are so much fun and so creative and <laughs> are really thinking outside the box. And, and I, and I love that. Let me ask you about team of duos whatever we want to call them um it seems i mean are there more now than there were 10 years ago is is it a thing happening or it kind of already happened it kind of was like i think it came and went already (laughs) it really started at least in my mind with day 19 um which was claire and jeremy weiss and i realized you know, when they started it, it was like a big thing. And then there was, then, then there was the Barkers and Jordan and Danny. And, mm-hmm. you know, I think duos can be really powerful, especially like in this space in particular with Gerard and Bella Vander, they're both shooters, but they both have their own strengths that they bring to the table. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think with duos too, it probably helps if you're actually partnered together in some way. Well, that, that's, my, that's my next question. Yeah, most of the people Two. I know are actually married or or partners there are some who are not um but they do bring other things to the table whether it be you know like with jordan and danny who, who are together but you know danny is really the videographer and and mm. has these visions and, and and jordan really takes the the helm on the on the photos and i'm sure they can go back and forth but like when i think of them for jobs and i have been able to part, uh to refer them for jobs you know i always think of ooh, you can bring something extra to the client you know, even with people yeah. like um, We Are The Roads, you know, they actually, when I first found them uh, or became familiar with their work, they were like wedding photographers. And I just thought they were mm. such great lifestyle people and, and their career has boomed. Um, but again, it's well, because like, you can't, you just because there are two of you, you can't charge twice the creative. No, right? you, can't so charge, you can't charge twice as much. You, yeah. you are splitting, you are splitting things. Um, you know, it's the benefit to the client that you're getting dual angles of people shooting things like that. For the price so, of one. Yeah. Two for the price of one. Yeah, you're getting two for the price of one. So I, I mean, I'm sure there are, are ways to so you sell it. make it work. Yeah. Um, but I don't think they're anything new. I think that they, um, where it can work, it works out well. Yeah. That's always, oh, you know what? That's a great, uh, great segue to, to, <laughs> to um, our favorite duo tropico photo which is michelle norris and forrest aguar which uh live in atlanta live and work in atlanta and um i'm proud to say you know we definitely try to find seek out photographers that are up and coming and um, we had them on in probably 2017 and they've only been going up from there ever since and do uh, all kinds of huge stuff now. So um, they're so creative. I I yeah. love their work. Um, like this was the campaign I think I was telling you about for Simmons, and I just thought it was so cool because you know we're stuck in quarantine, and like another shot that they have of this is like someone playing pool on on the table. Um, mm. They just bring so much creatively to the table, and they're so colorful and poppy, and and really hone in on their style. But again, they are professional image makers you know they understand yeah. production they understand all the nuances of production of casting and lighting and you know all of the things that go into making a really great you know experience for a producer because nothing is worse than being a producer at an agency or a brand and it can be a stressful time pulling a photo shoot off you know so yeah. to have photographers and to have creatives that you feel confident are going to pull this off and and do it on budget and on time all of those yeah. things that is that is what makes a true professional photographer. And this and they're a great example. I'll use them as an example 
to um, point back to what we were talking about earlier when we were talking about how as a photographer, you can sort of create your own pitch deck to two agencies for reps. Um, they, I know each of them um, on their own has many skill sets beyond just taking a picture. Mm -hmm. Forrest used to do, uh, do digiteching stuff and is a, a great at lighting. Michelle is an incredible stylist. And I mean, they make everything, all of their, like their backgrounds, mm -hmm. um, uh, that vision that they have. So they are, there are so many things just beyond like being able to take a picture that they can offer, which, which is, you know, what people are hiring them for. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a, they're a great, really great example of a team that uh, just makes such a, an excellent team, you know? Yeah, and they make like, an impact. They, re they really do. I mean, I, I've been lucky enough to be able to put them up for a few different jobs, um, you know, especially even, even during this pandemic where things have been, like I said, we get in those campaigns that are like, hey, we're looking to do something fun and colorful and this. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I have like yeah. four people <laughs> I know on the, found, on the found platform that immediately, you know, I think of, and it's Tropico, the Voorhees, you know, Nicole Clementson. There are just these people who pop into my head, which again, that speaks to like why it's so important to have, you know, just define your vision to define your visual voice. Because when, when something pops into my inbox for a project, there's a reason why certain people come to my mind is because they've made that, that impression. Yeah. And that's why it's important to, to always be, um, like you said, always be creating, but always be sending out, you know, those promos and it's, and it's not just promos, but like doing the things that might not, you know, it's not always about just, just booking a job, you know, like yeah. go to the event where other people are hanging out, you know, just so that you can have a real conversation and maybe you'll meet someone who, you know, like down the road, you know, it'll, it'll lead to something, but like staying on the tops of people's minds and, you know, just, and also, you know, being a, a genuine person, reaching out to an editor, editor that you've worked with several times and, you know, asking them how they're doing or like, you know, not making it not just about work, like actually, you know, caring about, I don't know, something else. I think, I think it can actually help just to build that relationship. And it, it sort of proves to them that um, you're a human and it's not, mm -hmm. you just, you're not just using them for the next job in a way, which it can feel like that sometimes if you're, if you're always just saying, Hey, you got any work for me? Hey, you know, um, cause it's a, it's a, it's always a hustle. It is. And like, as a rep, I have to have really thick skin because there are times I email, 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 and don't hear back. You know, we're, mm. we've come up against a generation of art directors and, and younger people who don't pick up the phone and, and getting in touch with them, sliding into their DMs, kind of being on LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn <laughs> is a really great place to, to connect professionally. And, and really? I have done a fair amount of that where, you know, if I can't find someone's contact information and there's a company I'm interested in connecting with, I'll go on LinkedIn, I'll find them, I'll send them a you know, uh, a, you know, direct message and just tell them who I am, the kind of photographers I work with, you know, ask them if they'd be, you know, willing to share their email so I can, you know, share some work with them. Um, I think that when you come from a place of being, you know, humble and earnest and honest, people respond really well for that. You know, you can, you can tell when someone's being authentic and real with you um, and not just kind of, you know, placating you in a way or, or pandering to you or any of that kind of stuff. And, and I think that goes a long way. Like, you know, I think one of the things I love about being a rep is I, I genuinely care about the photographers I work with and the work that I'm putting out there and, and wanting people to succeed in it. It's a really tough business, but I think if you, yeah. you know, focus on creating that portfolio and focus on creating the avenues of income for yourself that you can, you know, look at some people here, even in, in Atlanta, you know, Audra Melton, who has an incredible um, editorial, you know, uh, portfolio. But that doesn't mean she only can shoot for newspapers or magazines. Right. Like there are right. so many cool NGOs and organizations, and educational things, um, and and graphic design firms that do annual reports. I mean, she could be shooting for all of those type of things. Uh, Gregory Miller is another one who's here. Who I love Greg Miller's work. I mean, he shoots healthcare and education. And yeah. when you look at all. I, I literally look at all of his work, and it's so consistent and so beautiful. The moments he captures. But he could be shooting for. EDUs, he could be, you know, you, it doesn't have to be these, these sexy clients, like, oh, I'm shooting yeah. for, you know, I don't know, Verizon. Yeah, like Nike, like, yeah. Yeah, or Nike or all these things. There are so many worthwhile, awesome clients who do such cool, creative work. 
And, and there is a lot of out there still. There is a, so yeah. much need for imagery. Don't I let think, anyone um, ever tell you photography or print is dead. It will never be. That's so true. Thank you for that. You, you just warmed my heart. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, part two of our conversation is going to be avenues of income. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to come off of uh, screen share and we're going to go back to, okay. Is everyone still there? Um, because I want to make sure that if anyone has any questions, we can, we can uh, get the questions in. Um, I'm sorry. I wasn't monitoring the chat very well because I'm, I'm on my own. Uh, but if anyone has a question, um, feel free to chime in. And, and while, while we wait, I'll, um, just ask JP for your sort of your final, I mean, I don't want to be too cliche and ask for your, your piece of advice for, for the photographer out there trying to go to the next level. But, um, I think I will actually, because your advice is, is really, um, it's prescient and, and solid, you know, and I, I think it's, 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 like, it's like real advice. It's not just bullshit. So like, if I, um, what would you say to the photographer that doesn't have representation, you know, maybe is in their first five years or so, and it's really good, but, um, you know, wants to go to the next level. Email me. No, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, no, it's, it's, you've got to network. You have to, you have to have the confidence and, um, you have to have the confidence in your portfolio and, and know what you're showing there to really reach out to people, um, to build your list of people that you want to reach out to, um, to really identify. It can be hard sometimes, like when you look at your own imagery, but to identify the different markets that might be good for you and then really just do the job of reaching out. Yeah. Especially if, like you said, you're in it, you're five years in, you have some good clients, you know you're capable of doing it. You know, it really, you, you just can't sit there and wait for the work to come in. You have to, you know, there's too many people out there these days. You need to be getting in the inboxes. And I know it's tough. And I feel bad for art directors sometimes who tell me I get so many emails a day. I don't know what to do. And I'm like, <laughs> I get it, but it is still part of their job, you know? And there are people out there who love finding up and coming photographers and still love giving people that first break. Um, and I know the pandemic has been, has been really tough on people, but I think that the more you continue to be consistent, that's a huge thing too. You can't just be like doing it in spurts. You can't be like, oh, okay, uh, I'm gonna yeah. do outreach now and then I'm never gonna talk to this person again. You have to think of your photography as a business. You have to set aside time, not just to create imagery, but to reach out to people. You know, taking one hour a week to say, I'm gonna reach out to five new people and then, you know, marking your calendar for three months down the line and reaching out to those same five people with new work. Stay consistent, you know, because a good example is like, I used to work, um, I'm, he'll remain nameless for now, but I used to represent a photographer who we bid on the same Converse job like five or six times and, and did not get the job. And finally, the art producer had said to me, it's not that we don't want to hire him. It's that all these other people have also been promoting to us over the years. And there are all these other people we want to work with. And so we're getting him into these bids. Wow. He will eventually get the job. But right now, the client still wants to use this person first and this person first. And you know, so it's, it's, you have to keep, it, it's repetitive, but it has to become part of your norm until you do have an agent who takes some of that off your plate. Um, or until you have, you know, a partnership with someone like found where, you know, yeah, you can, I still expect all of my members on found to do all their own personal outreach and, and, you know, think of, think of your marketing as like a bicycle wheel. How many spokes can you add to that to make it really stable and strong? Um, I know that must speak to you, Ray. Um, but, you know, so <laughs> That's it, great you know, advice. Yeah. Once you have someone who can help you and, and, you know, start doing some of that outreach for you or continue to, to get your work out to a wider audience, that will help. But until you're even in a place where a, a place like found will, will bring you on, you know, it, it's just doing a little bit of that on your own. Yeah. The consistency. That's so, that's so seems obvious, but it's so key. We, we're in this, this culture of um, where we just, we want that instant gratification of, you know, how many likes did my picture get? Or, you know, it's like, it's instant. Like every, you're checking your phone for whatever little bit of, of like, you know, every hour. Um, yeah. But with the work we do, it's, it's a real, it's a slow build. It's, it's two years of emailing someone or, ha or building relationship with an editor and then they give you a job. And then that's, and then what you have to understand is like, that's the beginning of what could be 
a 10 year relationship mm -hmm. of, of constant work of frequent work. Um, but it is so hard. I mean, and, and you, you can understand why it's so hard to, to put in and put in and put in when you aren't getting jobs out of it. It's really easy to just feel like, oh, well, I, you know, no one wants to hire me. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's a constant, that's the name of the game. It's, it's a hustle, you know? Yeah. And it's hard on reps um, too. You know, we, we mm -hmm. want that win. We want, you know, the jobs we estimate and negotiate to get awarded, you know, we don't get paid to estimate. And, and let me tell you, there are revisions upon revisions sometimes, you know, going after things and, and it just takes consistency. And I, and it's hard. Yeah. Photographers are artists, you know, they're not meant to just be sitting there emailing people and doing the business side of things until, <laughs> yeah. until you have that team around you that's what you need to do to grow it. That's what you need to do to even mm -hmm. to, to impress a rep so that a rep says, God, this guy's on his game. He knows what he wants, you know, um, or a girl or them, you know, right. whatever, whatever, you know, just you have, you have to put in the work. It's not, I know this, this culture that we're in of this overnight success and getting everything, but all of those good things, like I, I always have to remind, remind my, even myself, like good things come to those who wait, but it also comes to those who are persistent. You know, I've always sure. found the balance for me and being a rep or being an agent was like, I don't ever want to annoy someone, but I want to stay persistent. You know, I want right. to, I want to always like go with, educate myself with why, like, if I want to work with someone, I mean, I used to go as far as like, you know, Googling the creative director that I'm approaching, seeing if they have their own uh, site that showcases some of their work they've worked on. So I can reference things like, you know, it just, you have to come from a place of education. You have to come from a place of, of being a bit humble about your work. Yeah, solid advice. Thank you, JP. The most important question uh, on the chat is how do we get in touch with JP? Do you have an, an email or yeah, something you'd want to share? JP at foundartistsplural.com. So foundartists.com um, is the best way. Or you can slide into my DMs at JN Pearl, P E R L. I think it is. Yeah, P E R L. Um, uh, so follow me on Instagram. Um, that's really the only two places I am. I'm not, a, I'm not a huge social person, uh, when it comes to social media. So I'm, I'm not on TikTok. uh, LinkedIn, of course, you can all find me on LinkedIn as well and, and feel free. Um, yeah, I love meeting photographers. I love, I, you know, this is a business I just, I just love. I, I literally came out of college. I went to Emerson in, in Boston and I came out of college and was like, I want to be a rep. Like, I don't know that many people do that. <laughs> um, I, just, I was like, I loved photography. I studied yeah. photography and advertising in school. And I was like, there are a lot more talented people than me. And I think I can like talk on their behalf, but I don't know that I can like be behind the camera. Yeah. So. Well, I can, I can personally, um, vouch for JP. She, uh, is a really good, she has a great eye and that's how we met. I didn't, you know, it was, it was still work and um, and we connected and, you know, that led us to here. So, uh, check out, you know, for anyone who's interested, who's not ready to, you know, join Anderson Hopkins or commune or something else, check out a place like found. I mean, there's other ones. I mean, I don't know how there's a lot of them. Yeah. But, there's, um, is it just artists. found or is it found, found artists? Artist. Found artists. Found com? Com. So it's found, I mean, there's found, there's commune, there's at edge, there's workbook. Um, I obviously think our platform's the best because you know that's that's my yeah. Uh, but but, there, but the, there's a lot of options for people who you is. know who it is a great way to to get in to, to like to build up to the the higher level um, representation. It's a great way to get started, and it is it's an investment. You really have to see it as an investment in your in your business in your in your career. These things don't happen for free. There's no giveaways. Um, so I will, you know. thing. I will say one thing, look at what you make as a total. And I've always said this, take five to 10% of what you're, you know, what you bring home every year and put that towards your marketing. You know, right now is a weird time because direct mail isn't really, you know, a thing right now because of the pandemic and there's all these different, I mean, I honestly think a lot of these virtual reviews are genius because, you know, you can still get in there and connect with people, uh, you know, while we're not doing these in-person events, I do have faith they will come back. Um, but I, I definitely think that it's important to, to really invest in yourself and be realistic with what that investment is and, uh, what that return on that investment is going to be. Is it tax deductible? Yeah. Anytime you, so you're, any, 
personal projects you come up with, if you use it as a tax deduction, yep. it also becomes marketing. Yep. John hijacked everybody. Always solid advice. Um, thank you, John, for that. Yeah, yeah. You, if you are a freelance, you're essentially, you know, you probably have an LLC or something, and yeah, all those expenses are are, are write offs, uh, tax deductible write offs. All the gear you buy, every expense you spend on 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 your business. Yeah. Uh, paying for a portfolio all... review. Yeah, it's it's yeah. all marketing. So anything um, that's, that's a... is definitely a write off for your business. Right. It's another way to look at it. Um, if there's no other questions. So it's found, uh, by the way. So found a write-off as well. Just so you know. Paying for found. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> totally. Um, JP, it's been a real pleasure to talk with you without a mask on. Um, really, really enjoyed your insight. It's great to hear a lot, a lot of things I, I didn't know, and, um, even though I've known you for a while. So, um, and I know that, you, you know, hearing your, your advice is so valuable for someone in our position who's a freelance photographer or you know, these people in the audience who are um, photographers that are, are grinding every day. It's really, really valuable insight. So we, we really sincerely appreciate you, sh you know, being candid and sharing your knowledge with us. And I hope you'll come back and stay involved with ATL Photo Night now that you're here in Atlanta. Oh, yeah. I, I remember I remember when I came to, the, to hear Kate, I was like, I was like, I'll do it one night. I'll happily do it. I'm, I, I'm so excited about the, the ATL photo community in general. I can't wait till we're able to do it in person again. That's right. We're going to grow it together. We're going to be back better than ever. Um, and, and look at ACP. I know you're a newbie here, but they're looking for a fellowship there, you know, they're, you got they got it. money to sponsor. So watch what, the, the ACP. What's the website? Site. What is the website? ACP.org. You got it. And they, they did just announce, they did just announce a new um, fellowship opportunity. Um, and I will, I'll, I'll put that on our Twitter um, so that you guys can find it as well. I try to definitely spread the love with all the ACP stuff, but um, yeah, follow us on, uh, on social media, on Twitter and Facebook, because we'll be announcing what we're going to do in March and then beyond that. Um, and it's also just a really great way to keep up on the other things happening in Atlanta because we definitely um, try to re-up and share all the people that we that we work with like ACP. So um, thanks again, everyone, for coming, spending your Thursday evening with us. I hope to see you again in March. Um, hopefully Kevin will be back with us. Hopefully I'll be here as well. You never know what work's going to do. Um, but hope to see you all again. Reach out to us anytime. JP. Thank you again so much. Thank you so much. We would, we would clap if we were in person. <laughs> you'd, you'd get a standing ovation. Um, and thank you, everyone. Good night. Night. Night.